Welcome to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. I'm so glad to have you here with me today because we are going to be talking about the Fountain of Youth. I have an expert on the Fountain of Youth with me today, Dr. Francis Palmer. And he is going to be sharing with us a lot of secrets of not aging. So who isn't interested in that, right? <laughs> Every one of us cares about staying youthful, particularly if that means the quality of our lives is going to be better. So please stay with me because very shortly we'll be meeting Dr. Francis Palmer. Now, welcome. And for those of you who are new to the show, I just would like to say that Change It Up Radio is about change. My work as a life transition coach is in helping people deal with the discomfort of change. Because while we humans need change for growth and basically just to keep us from getting bored, we, we don't like the discomfort of the unfamiliar. So in my private practice, I work with people helping them make change smoother and more productive and feel better about the changes in their lives. Because we all know one thing is certain, and that is change is going to come. So whether you love your life or you don't, hang on, because change is going to come. All right, I'm also an author. I am the author of Chakras, The Magnificent Seven. I am the author of Grief, When Will This Pain Ever End? And that book is a great book for anyone going through a loss issue. You know, so often we think grief is just about death, but it isn't. It's about any kind of loss issue. It's the normal, natural response to a loss. So it could be a death, it could be a move, it could be a job loss. Just this morning, I was talking with a client who's just dealing with the loss of insulation, you know, the loneliness of, of what happens when we have to shut down or when we are quarantined. So we all know a lot about loss in the last couple of years in dealing with the pandemic that we've been dealing with. And it's important when someone's dealing with loss to know the right things to say to them. There are things that are really helpful and things that aren't. And my latest book, Saying the Right Thing When You Don't Know What to Say, is really helpful in, in giving you some ideas. I mean, like the whole sentence of what's helpful and many sentences that are not helpful so you know the kinds of comments to avoid when you're trying to have a helpful, supportive conversation with someone who's dealing with emotional pain. And by the way, if you go to my website, paulashaw.com, there's a cheat sheet there that you can grab for free. It's called 20 Things to Say and Not to Say to People in Pain. So please feel free to grab that at paulashaw.com. And also, if you would like to hear past shows or get information about being a guest or a sponsor on this show, you can get that information at changeituprradio.com. That's changeituprradio.com. So we're going to be talking about aging today. And I'll bet if I asked you, how many of you think aging is a natural thing and it's acceptable, it's normal, natural, and unavoidable? Most of you would probably raise your hand and say, well, yeah, <laughs> duh. But there's some new information about aging out there. And my guest is going to be sharing some of that information with us because he has been for decades, not only in the business of anti-aging really, but beauty because he has been 
professionally, uh, originally a plastic surgeon. So I think for many, many years, especially we girls, but now a lot of men as well, have been very concerned about keeping a youthful appearance. And as I've shared with you before, now that I have just a couple of months ago had my 71st birthday, I'm very concerned about youth. And not just because of the vanity, but let's face it, of course that's a piece of it, but also because quality of life. I want to live fully every day that I'm on this planet. I wanna feel good, I wanna be able to move well. And so I, I do some work to make that happen. And I have to tell you, recently I found out, and I'm shocked, I was shocked by this, but our longevity is only 20% about our genes. The other 20% is about how we live, how we're living our lives. And I'm so excited to be able to talk to Dr. Palmer about that because that was news to me. I only learned that recently in listening to an interview with Dr. David Sinclair, who is a, one of the foremost researchers on this whole anti-aging thing and uh, actually even age reversal. That's actually in the works, guys. So I know I should stop talking and let you hear from the expert. So I think I will do that because there's no doubt in my mind that since Ponce de Leon, everybody has been looking for the fountain of youth. It, it's, it's as old as humans on the earth, right? We. We want to live youthfully so that we can be our best selves. And we're very fortunate to be alive at this point in time. And it's particularly of interest because a lot of us boomers are now saying, okay, what can we do to keep quality of life? What can we do to still feel good about the way we look? Well, we're about to find that out. So let me first tell you a little bit about Dr. Francis Palmer. He is a world-renowned board-certified facial plastic surgeon and the author of What's Your Number? He's got more than three decades of practical experience in medicine and his aesthetic vision and surgical expertise attracted an array of clientele that was celebrities, royalty, and world leaders. But after many successful years, he retired his knife to focus his time and expertise on helping people achieve anti-aging from the inside out. And I love that idea because I'm all about that too. So, he now consults as Chief Medical Officer for Ponce de Leon Health, a company dedicated to <clears throat> developing drug-free solutions scientifically proven to extend overall longevity. Doesn't that sound good? Uh, while simultaneously increasing health span and reducing biological age for better health. He's been on CNN, ABC, CBS, all the big shows. And I think without any further ado, let's invite Dr. Francis Palmer to join us. Hello, Dr. Palmer. You're, you're muted. Can you unmute your mic, please? There you go. Otherwise, we can't hang on your every word. <laughs> and they've already heard enough from me. So, so delighted to have you here with me today and so delighted about what we're going to be talking about. So I think a good place to begin would be the difference between chronological age and biological age. What exactly is that all about? Sure. You know, chronological age is really simple is just how old are you? You take today's date, subtract your birth date, Mm -hmm. That's it. Pretty okay. straightforward. Times Biologi around the sun, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Can't do much about that. The yeah. biological age, though, is 
how old do you act? And I'm not talking about your behavior. I'm talking about how old do the cells of your body act when they function? Are they younger? Are you functioning at a more youthful level? Or are you older? This mm -hmm. is not so good. <laughs> so how do we, uh, besides, I want to ask you in a minute how we find that out. But when you say how we act, is that looking at the aches and pains or can I run a mile in, in a certain time? Is that what we're looking at? The, how our physiology is performing today? Well, that's a, that's a measure, right? Okay. But that would be a measure of what's going on at the cellular level, right? Uh -huh. So if you're unable to walk a mile, there could be a million different reasons why that's occurring. Maybe, maybe you have diabetes, maybe mm. you have problems with your nerves or problems with your muscle, or maybe you just don't feel like it. Yeah. I mean, there's a million <laughs> different reasons that they might be, but for whatever the reasons are, biological age really is a reflection totally of, of how useful your cells are functioning, how all the biological processes are working. Are they working at a 20-year-old level? Are they working at a 70-year-old level? I think this goes back to what we're going to talk about today is, you know, we all hear that 60s is the new 50 or 70s is the new 60 or 40s is the new 30, but, you know, what does that mean, Yeah. right? Right. It means that your body is functioning at a level that's 10 years younger than your chronological age. That's exactly what that means. Wow. Okay, so let's find out. How do we find out what our biological age is? So there, there are a bunch of different ways to do it. There's a lot that uh, most of the tests involve blood tests, but there's a simple home saliva test that measures the amount of methylation in your DNA. And without getting too complicated, <laughs> as we age, there, the degree of methylation in the DNA increases. So you can measure that. And research has shown that's a really good indication of biological aging. Now, why, do, why is DNA methylation this special thing? It's because it regulates genes being turned on and off. Ah, and the genes being turned on and off or expressions of genes is really what what makes everything function and at what level they function. So the, I find that really interesting. And yet that statistic that I just was mentioning that it's only 20% about the genes. And, and why is that? I would think genes would play such a bigger picture. Well, Gene, so it, it, it's interesting. So that goes back to biological age, because that's what we really are interested in, right? Yes. And what are the things that affect that? So I'd like to think, I want the listener or viewer to think of three main buckets. Okay. One would be the genetics. Just genetics is like a blueprint, right? It says mm -hmm. these are the way the cells are going to act. These are the way they're going to function. And if that was all there was, we wouldn't have these conversations. There would be nothing we could do. Right. But there are biological and also environmental factors that impact that. So what are some biological factors? Well, biological factors would be, do you have an acute or chronic disease? Uh -huh. That's going to influence. Do you have more or less of a key component that's necessary for one of your bodily functions to act? AKG is one of them. This is the study we're talking about. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that, then you're not going to be able to do a whole slew of things that your body needs to do at the cellular level oh. that will impact your biological age. And lastly, environmental, we all know what those are. There's lifestyle, right? Are you sedentary or are you active? You know, do you smoke? Do you get too much exposure to sun and, and all sorts of other things, diet, exercise, mm -hmm. all that goes in there, the amount of stress, that you're able to deal with or that you're exposed to. All those things together will impact the, the genetic expression. So it isn't just the genes alone, it's Got all it. the other things that matter. So we're hearing a lot these days about the impact of stress and inflammation in terms of aging us. So let's talk a little bit about that. Well, the inflammatory processes are, are like the nemesis of almost everything. If you look at any of the research, it says 
inflammation, 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 inflammation. <laughs> well, that's great, but yeah, you got to yeah. figure out how to decrease the inflammation. Right. So what does inflammation have to do with stress? It's probably the amount of cortisol levels that are being reduced, which is just something your body's using to fight that stress level. Mm -hmm. So it would not only be the amount of stress you're being exposed to, but how well do you cope with it? You know, you, you know already professionally that there's a whole array of, of how people can cope with stress from very poorly to extremely well. And I think stress is probably the biggest factor. I think the two biggest factors that Im impact how well we age is stress and how well you deal with it. And then it's the amount of activity. So a sedentary lifestyle is shown to create all sorts of medical problems moving forward. So these are two things we can really do something about. We can learn yes. to deal with stress and we can learn how to have a reasonably active lifestyle. Both are hugely important. Any tips on uh, ways that you think are particularly effective in dealing with stress? Well, I mean, I, I think you have to find what works for you. Yeah. I mean, for me, I believe in higher power, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm faith-based. And what that does is it allows me to take whatever's bothering me and give it to someone else, give yes. it to another power, better, better, stronger, more effective than me, whatever that is for somebody, if that works for them, other people might be meditation, other people mm -hmm. it's exercise, whatever it is, find some way to do it. I think the other is to deal with, I'm very pragmatic. I, I, I believe to embrace several things. One, it is what it is, is hugely important. I've said this for mm. decades. <laughs> so if there's something that you just simply have to get away from, then you have to realize you have to get away from it and you mm -hmm. need to make a change. The other is what you said in your intro that, that I kind of smiled at is the only inevitability is change. <laughs> Everything yes. is change. Yeah. And so you have to embrace that as well and mm -hmm. realize that things are going to come and change and we don't like it. That doesn't mean that we can't deal with it. So yes. however people have to find this, uh, I think they need to do that. And, and for me, exercise is open the front door. Everybody has an outside. <laughs> Take one step in front of the other and start walking. You don't need to pay anybody. You don't need a gym extra, you know, membership, nothing. Right. You could do that every day for 30 minutes and improve your lifestyle. And everybody, I shouldn't say that. Most people can do that. Mm -hmm. That's so true. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm a, I'm a meditator myself and have been doing that for probably more years than I can figure out right now. But I, I, you know, one of the things that we work with in the field of energy psychology is knowing that if you can shift somebody's energy, their light, if you will, you can shift physical pain, you can shift emotional pain, you can change things, you know, techniques like tapping meridian points, which we do in our field, can actually change the physiology or what's happening psychologically. And the other day I had kind of a funny experience I'd love to share with you because it reminds me so much of what you're saying, but I was disappointed. A plan fell through at the last minute and yeah. I was really looking forward to it, you know, and I yeah. know my inner child needed an adventure mm -hmm. and I just needed to get out of the house. Right. And it fell through. And so I tried calling a few people, nothing was coming together. And so I thought to myself, I'm going anyway. Mm -hmm. And so I got in my car. I turned on the Barry Manilow station on Pandora. <laughs> <laughs> and before I knew it, I was belting out, you know, <laughs> I write the songs. And, but I was physically shifting myself. And mm -hmm. in that physical shift, I had a mental, emotional shift. The disappointment, the anger went away. And it was such a great reminder to me that we have power over our own being, you know, and that mm. if we are willing to step in and do something, we can change things. Yeah, not only that, but maybe not to be caught forever in the moment. 
right? Because moments are like weather, it changes. Yes. And so at that moment, you were hugely disappointed. Everybody goes through that. But you realize that there were other moments that you weren't going to be disappointed. And you went on, I, I have, I, for me, it's my most profound discoveries. And I'm not saying that to, you know, make myself self sound like a genius, but I have come up with solutions to some very difficult problems. Mm -hmm. And I always found them in for me in times of quiet. So yes. for me, I could take a walk. I remember working with a company and we were really stuck and they had $200 million invested hmm. in getting this technology to work. And they were like, you have to tell us why it's not working. Yeah. And I said, uh, uh, okay, I've been trying <laughs> to get it to work for a year for you, but okay. And I went on a walk and I just quieted my mind and, and really something that I thought the computer is so powerful that we have between our ears. Mm -hmm. And it just said, look, I think you need to go look at, at, at this way, at this particular solution. And it yes. turned out to be the right one. And that happens to me quite often. So, and I'm not saying that's someone else's area, but these do exist for us. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a matter of just trying something, right? Because if you don't try something, nothing changes. If you right. want to change anything, then you have to try things. And they're not all going to work. They're not going to be successes. Mm -hmm. But if they don't hurt you, which is what my book said, here's, mm -hmm. a, here's a whole bunch of ways that I think you could evaluate yourself from the inside out and make yourself the best version of you, yes. whether it's your appearance, your personality, your relationships, whatever it is, just evaluate it first, be honest, try to find ways that you could that you can improve yourself. And if it doesn't hurt you, why wouldn't you try these? Mm -hmm. I, you have nothing to lose. Oh, I love that you said that. I love that you said that. And it's so true. You know, I, I spent a lot of years in Al-Anon because at the time I was married to an alcoholic. And one of the terms they always use in 12-step programs I love is it's an inside job. Mm -hmm. All of improvement in life is an inside job. It has to start here before we start seeing differences out here. And I love what you just said, because those moments alone is where we get a chance to really look yeah, and I, see I, what's I, going I, on. I think the idea is, uh, is, is to try to empower people, because I, I know it becomes very difficult. What we're talking about is hugely complicated to people. It's complicated mm -hmm. for us, for professionals, right? Yes. It's complicated for people who may not understand physiology and all this other stuff. So you have to try to make it in something where th it's manageable. And mm -hmm. that's where I think uh, some of this becomes easy to understand, trying to find a more active lifestyle or maybe using this supplement that, we, that we, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about, mm -hmm. where people are used to taking something and if it makes a huge change, this is something that people should consider trying. And I think these sort of things are practical Otherwise, we task them to go read. I mean, how many articles do you think would be, they'd have to read? Millions <laughs> upon millions to find yes. actionable um, items. And mm -hmm. I think it's, that's why it's our job to try to crystallize it and say, hey, try this or try that or try, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's important. That is so true. I love that you said that. And we're going to need to take a quick break, Dr. Palmer. But when we come back, let's talk about that supplement and let's talk about your book. We will be right back. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio. I'm your host, Paula Shaw. And today we are talking with Dr. Francis Palmer, who is a board certified plastic surgeon who is now working in the area of anti-aging from the inside out through natural means. And we are just about to talk about some of that. So you're just in time. But if you're just joining us, be sure you go back and listen to the beginning of this show because he's already shared some real pearls with us that you don't want to miss. Dr. Palmer, you were just talking a little bit about this supplement that you've been doing research on that can actually help us turn back the hands of time. So let's talk a little bit about that. 
Yeah, and again, what's interesting is, you, and we all hear, right, 40 is the new 30, 60 is the new 50. Mm -hmm. uh, but what does that mean? That means that inside you're functioning at a much more youthful uh, level. And that's biological age that we talked about. So the publication Aging just came out with a research paper that showed this proprietary blend of calcium AKG with specific vitamins. It's vitamin A for men, vitamin D3 for women. And this formulation was found over testing many, many different variations of calcium AKG, alpha ketoglutarate. The supplement is called Rejuvent, R-E-J-U-V-A-N-T. And it showed that after seven months without making any lifestyle changes, the people dropped their biological age by almost a decade. It was over eight years wow. on average. Wow. Now that already, I'm just let that soak in for a minute, but <laughs> now I'm going to put it in perspective because you know, what does that mean? Okay. Yes. Aging also published another article um, about two or three weeks before this. And it was those who participated in a very comprehensive 12 month study, but this study made all sorts of lifestyle changes. So it mm. said, this is the diet that you have to be on. You have to sleep seven hours a night. You have to go through all these stress reduction exercises. You have to take probiotics. You have to take these supplements. You have to exercise a minimum five times a week of mm -hmm. strenuous exercise for 30 minutes. At the end of 12 months, their biological age dropped by two years. So you're talking two years with all these lifestyle changes, wow. including supplements, wow. and eight years with no lifestyle changes. And I'm not saying you shouldn't make them, but these are what the study showed. Wow. Without making any lifestyle changes, four times that. So 400% difference in reducing biological age. And what is this substance? Is it part of calcium? Is it a kind of calcium? What is it? You no, know, the calcium and the vitamins, the add-on, the, the primary oh. supplement is called AKG or alpha ketoglutarate. It has been around okay. for 40 or 50 years. Oh, wow. It's well known for bodybuilders because they found that it would help their muscles heal after they did oh. these uh, excessive workouts. Now it's a subject of an enormous amount of research because AKG is a naturally occurring substance in the body, but it's a required metabolite for cellular production for every cell of the body. Oh. The problem is between 40 and 80 years of age, the amount of AKG that we have in our body starts to decrease. Mm -hmm. This then adds credence to the thing well I'm, I'm 40 and i don't have the energy i had when i was 20 right well right. you don't have as much akg and that produces the energy for your body so that's fine but you can lose 10 times the amount of akg not 10 percent, 10 times so somebody who's 60 or 70 years old may have only 10 percent the akg they had when wow. they were 30 and unfortunately it gets worse because you can't get it from food or diet. Oh, that was going to be my next be, question. Yes, I know. It has to be a supplement. And so it's wow. a supplement that you need to take. But, uh, but this specific blend was the one that was used in the study. And it's important for us to say we didn't conduct this study. We just provided the product for the study. Uh -huh. the, stu the, the study was performed by other individuals, although I am an author on on the paper. And, and how, how was this discovered, the AKG? Or is it something that's always been out there? It's, it's been out there for a really long time, which is why I keep stressing that if people want to get this the proprietary blend, which means that mm -hmm. it's patented and trademarked, they're going to have to go to Rejuven, R-E-J-U-V-A-N-T.com, because I it's see. a specific type of calcium AKG with the vitamins but here's another kicker. It depends on where the AKG supplement is delivered, how well it's absorbed. Your body oh. only cares about what it can take. 
yes. doesn't care what you take in it only cares what it gets yeah and so it turns out this is a very high pure and concentrated form of calcium akg that is timed release to be released in the small intestines where they found this is where it's maximally absorbed oh so I see. All, everything you know it's like everything right a perfect chocolate cake recipe everything has to line <laughs> up or it's not going to be good right. this is the same thing it has to be the right recipe or it doesn't line up and your biological age won't reduce that is so fascinating and that really helps me understand why there was so much research before they could come up with this particular compound that would work effectively uh, and and I'm so fascinated because, as I said, I'm a fan of David Sinclair, and I, I heard him recently talking about how his lab at Harvard is working on some, he calls them molecules, but I think we're talking supplements yeah, that are that. also going yeah. to help the body perform optimally. You talk about a concept called health span. Right. What exactly is health span? Well. I, look, I love to relate things so we can all understand. So I don't know if anybody saw there was a there was a an aging longevity thing that was done. I forget which major network did it. And they showed and said, well, we're all going to live to 150 years old. But they showed these people, these poor people were old, decrepit. Oh, and I yeah. thought to myself, who the heck wants to be like no, that for absolutely. 50, 60 years? <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's longevity is how long do you live? Health span is how long do you live well? We want to live well. We don't want to yes. be decrepit. Amen, so, brother. <laughs> so, so, it's, so this is what, I mean, this is a physician what I think we all want. We want to live to be fill in the number, 140, mm -hmm. 150, whatever it is. We want to have this optimal health. And then all of a sudden, whoop, just when we go, we go in our sleep and that's it. Didn't suffer, didn't have didn't have a bunch of disease. So what that's perfect. <laughs> what that is, is it's called compressing the morbidity, compressing on a timeline from zero to whenever the end of our life is, we compress the morbidity to a very small part. And that is working on health span. To me, that's where the research needs to go. Mm -hmm. You know, it's great to extend our lives, but not if we're frail, not if we're sick. Exactly. It's not, that is not what we want. No. And if you think about that, it uh, socioeconomic wise, that's a train wreck. Totally. Yeah, it's totally. a train wreck. I mean, you don't want that. You want the opposite. Mm -hmm. We all want to function at a great level. So we need to do things that people out there looking, I know longevity kind of, oh, that makes us all perk up, but don't get stuck on longevity so much. Think about health span, right? Mm -hmm. How is it going to improve my quality of life for today, for the next decade, for the next two, three decades? Yes, That's what you should be interested in. Now in your book, what's your number? You talk about the Palmer Code. What what's the Palmer Code? Yeah, well, it's it's interesting. Real quick, I'll tell you a story about the book. So, mm -hmm. I I uh, I finished my training. I came out. I trained with some of the best um, surgeons in the world, and I thought something was missing. And I'm a Virgo, and I me too. I can't have that. <laughs> I have to understand things, and I got to figure it out. And things work <laughs> for a reason, or they don't work for a reason. And I right. need to know both. <laughs> and so I spent years just looking at faces and saying, you know, they tell me that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but, but how am I supposed to do my job if I can't evaluate beauty and I have no idea where I'm going? Mm -hmm. That's like me telling somebody, I want you to drive from San Diego to San Jose, but I'm not going to give you a roadmap and I'm going to expect you to get there in some reasonable amount of time. It's yeah. nonsensical. <laughs> and so I just figured out it took me two decades of actually doing these procedures where I can effectively look at somebody and I can evaluate the level of attractiveness and all the features of the face have a certain order of priority. And to me, I'm not, I don't, I'm not saying uh, uh, that one's more important than the other. I just meant in establishing a certain look to mm -hmm. a female, beautiful face, to a, a chiseled male face, 
They carry different weights. And, and I would use that to consult with patients. I would say, look, if you really want to be naturally attractive, these are the things I think you should think about. And these mm -hmm. are the, in the order of priority, the importance, these are the ways we can improve them. These are the pro, pro, pluses and minuses. And, and they all understood anything. Mm -hmm. Very straightforward, very objective. The thing about that is it's highly reliable and reproducible. Ah. And if you think about that, that's the key for what I think aesthetic medicine should be. Mm -hmm. It should be highly repeatable, highly, uh, you know, quantifiable. And so that's why I called it the Palmer code, because for me, it was a code to unlock the way that you would you evaluate your face. And actually finishing the book, I rewrote it five times <laughs> and then wrote the preface at the end. And the preface is my ah. journey through the discovery. And I just was amazed. Mm. It, the book is basically my revelation of showing people you simply cannot remove how you look from how you feel. Totally. And vice versa. But if, mm. you, if, you, if you rip that apart, what that says is everything that happens to you during your daily life has an impact on how you feel, which impacts the way you look. Or if you impact the way that you look, it's going to impact how you feel. And I used to challenge myself and anybody that would take the challenge to see if there were one single thing they could think of that wouldn't interconnect that way. And there are none. 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 The answer is none. Wow. So I wrote the book 90% for people to do things that I would never be able to offer them, offer them services for because that has the, the majority of ways you can improve yourself. You would not be facial plastic surgery or body plastic surgery. It's mm -hmm. all the other things that happen to you and they're easier and, and, and less expensive for you to do. Mm -hmm. And I would tell people to try those first. I love that. So just as a way of kind of reviewing, what are some of those things we can do to prevent aging or turn back the clock or even just slow it down. Let's just kind of summarize some of those things for our listeners. Yeah. So I think what we do, is we go back and define what that is, right? That's mm -hmm. a health span as measured by biological aging. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. So we want to focus on that. So let's go back to those three buckets that we talked about. Okay. Genetics. Can mm -hmm. we do anything about our genetics now? No. <laughs> <laughs> Will we be able to do something about our genetics in the future? Absolutely, thousand percent. But let's put that ah, aside because we can't okay. do that now. Biological. Can we do anything about our biological? We can't really do anything to prevent acute and chronic diseases. They're going to come and go. I think we can do some things in the next category, which is lifestyle. But in this category, that's where we start to talk about some key essential supplements. So we go back to this rejuvant, R-E-J-U-V-A-N-T, and the website mm -hmm. is the same name, just .com. If there's something that comes around that says this may have an impact directly on what you're trying to reduce, biological age, mm -hmm. it doesn't require you to do many things. So it's not restrictive. It's mm -hmm. not hugely expensive. It's not dangerous. It's not any of those things. My question is, why on God's earth wouldn't you try that? <laughs> okay. I know you want to go take a handful of supplements, but research has shown that taking more supplements actually reduces the effect and benefit of anyone. So you, that's not oh. the answer. Okay. Oh, I didn't so know that. That's if you read something that says vitamin C works, it doesn't mean if you take vitamin C plus vitamin E plus D plus A plus, 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 you're going to get a benefit. Research actually shows the opposite. No okay. kidding. So that's in a biological bucket. Okay. And I think, I think uh, again, because it's so overwhelming and you know, all the research is out there and everyone's saying all this stuff works, just remain logical when you look at something, right? When you, when you look at a, a, a publication, is it animal data or is it human data, right? Mm -hmm. The studies we talked about, the two that I said from, from aging, both are what I call real world data. That means it's human data. It's yeah. people who are taking whatever it is that you want to, that you're considering taking, mm -hmm. and they took it for a reason. 
they had something to look at, they measured it, and at the end, they measured it, and they made some conclusion. Mm -hmm. That's a really good study, okay? Yes. That's, that's yes. not ambiguous. It tells you exactly what it was. So right. I think look for things that are like that. There are a lot of things out there that have no human data. Wow. And we are not mice. Mm -hmm. And we are not worms. <laughs> and we are just not. We're not starfish or and any so of those other things. And so it's wonderful, we but we are not them, yes. right? As a physician, I can tell you we're not. And so <laughs> it doesn't mean that it'll work for you. Right. And then I think if, you, if we get off of that, because you could stay there forever. And if you just did that, I don't think that's good either. Mm -hmm. I think we need to work on what I call the inner you. And that's us inside, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I think especially now during this pandemic, it, it is trying to work through a way where you're happy, right? If you have a choice to be happy or unhappy, which would you choose? Definitely go unhappy. Most people are going <laughs> to raise their hand and say, I want to be happy. Okay, so what does that mean for you? I think a lot of people don't know what that means. So mm -hmm. I think some of these things we talked about are really good. Find some way that you're gonna be able to be more active if you're not, I promise you, metabolic syndrome is real. And metabolic syndrome is somebody who has a sedentary lifestyle that sets himself up for diabetes and cardiovascular disease mm -hmm. and stroke. And we know this is coming. Yes. So that would be a huge bucket. So work on that. Well, I don't like to go to the gym. Who says you gotta to go to the gym? Right? You have an outside. Go outside. Okay, if you don't have an outside and it's cold, go to the mall, find some place. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't have any of those, do some kind of uh, exercise in front of TV, mm -hmm. whatever it is, don't accept it. So I think these things are hugely powerful because we both know you make a small change, then all of a sudden you say, ooh, I feel great. Then yes. you make another change, then yes. you make another change. Yes. So every great journey, guess what? It begins with one first Single step. step. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. You started as a doctor and ended as a philosopher and shared <laughs> something so beautiful with us that I, I buy 100% because I do think it's a whole person thing, you know, whether our life is happy and healthy and working. And so I, I just couldn't think of a more perfect way for you to end our interview, except that I need you to tell our listeners if they want to learn more about you or these things you've shared or your book, where do they go? Okay, we'll start with the book. The, the book is available on Amazon or any, anywhere that, that mm -hmm. books are sold. It's called What's Your Number? The Palmer Code. They can learn more about me at, at Dr. Palmer. So drpalmer.com, D-R-P-A-L-M-E-R.com. And for the, the supplement and the, the studies we talked about, Rejuvent, R-E-J-U-V-A-N-T.com. Perfect. I guess that's everything we need to know. And it was really clear. I just want to say, Dr. Palmer, what a joy it has been spending this time with you. And I feel like you've given my listeners so much value. So thank you so much. Oh, it's for... been a pleasure. It's been mm -hmm. wonderful speaking to you. And I, and I wish everybody nothing but the best. I can see that. And I feel it as well. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all our listeners. Remember, you can hear us on every major podcast platform, including the latest one, Podopolo, that's very, very special. And you can hear us on iHeartRadio, Blog Talk Radio, and of course, on changeitupradio.com. And if you got value out of this show, please share it. And don't forget to subscribe and like us. You know the drill. That'll help us to keep sharing wonderful quality information like Dr. Palmer shared with us today. So until next week, thank you so much for being here, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.